Florida Derby, always dreaming. They won it by four in the end. American Anthem has taken off. American Anthem easily in the Woody Stevens. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spa Babies, presented by Windstar Farm. I'm Dan Nolman, along with Nicole Russo, and let's take a look at the field for Thursday's $100,000 P.G. Johnson Stakes. It doubles as our DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day, and you can access free Formulator Pass performances on the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com. Please download them and handicap along with us. As we take the P.G. Johnson field in post-position order, you will note that the number seven, Wild and Ready, is by Windstar Stallion more than ready. We begin with a peek at the Timeform U.S. pace projector, Nicole, and no surprise that they have the number one mentality, a stretch out sprinter on the lead. Yeah, Mentality was a good debut winner at Belmont going six furlongs, really digging in late while getting leg weary. A really nice effort. Uh, she's been impacted by the weather. She was entered for a couple of turf sprint stake spots that we actually really liked her in discussing on Spa Babies, cutting back to five and a half furlongs. The weather impacted those races. They were taken off the turf. She came out of them. Not sure if she wants to go this long, but she should definitely be a pace factor. We're going to take a look at that career debut way back on June 16th at Belmont. And like many Wesley Ward trained two-year-olds, mentality showed good speed. And she's putting away the pace presser, the number 11, putting you on the news. She earned a really solid buyer speed figure of 70. What do you make of the blinkers off? Do you think that uh, Wesley Ward is trying to get this horse to relax just a little bit as she tries to navigate th uh, two and a half more furlongs? I think that's definitely the move we're looking at here, hoping just to take the edge off some of her natural speed a little bit, get her to relax. Wesley Ward does place his two-year-olds very well. She certainly wouldn't be here if he didn't think she could stretch out. So I don't think you can throw her out necessarily, but I did like her much better in the one-turn spots. The number two is Old Fashioned Style, a recent maiden winner in an off-the-turf race for Gary Contessa. This will be the Old Fashioned Phillies' first start on turf. Do you think she'll be able to step on the surface? You know what? Some of the immediate pedigree for this filly is dirt, but the second dam is a multiple stakes winner and grade three placed on turf and encouragingly going longer on turf. This one did win her debut at seven furlongs. I think she'll handle the stretch out. It's just a matter of whether or not she can tap into that further back turf ability enough. Old fashioned style sire, old fashioned only 4% winners with first time turf runners. The number three is Orb Olution. No surprise that this filly relished the distance the first time she was stretched out around two turns. As we take a look at that race right now, do you feel she has found her niche on the turf? She's down on the inside, the number four easing out right now. Well, it's very interesting. Um, her sire, Orb, this is his first crop. He's very well regarded. He's had several winners on turf already, even though he has no turf background himself by Malibu Moon out of an, an, uh, out of an unbridled mare, Kentucky Derby winner. Uh, I think some of his horses have shown up on turf early, more because those were the two turn races that were being written earlier for two-year-olds and the connections were looking for longer spots for them. Orbulution certainly runs on the turf, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this one trying two turns on the dirt later on. That being said, this one definitely does have turf ability in her female family. Her dam, My Rachel, was third in the grade three Long Island going longer on the turf, and she's produced a couple of stakes placed runners, including Firehouse Red, second in the Edgewood. It's the female family of Jack Milton, a grade one winner on the Keeneland turf grade three winner peace preserver uh this one definitely relished the distance definitely has some female aptitude for the surface kind of a versatile type pedigree i think the number four lifetime citizen took a big step forward on the buyer speed figure scale in her first start for trainer phil serpy she's going to stretch out for the first time what do you think about this philly's pedigree for distance i do like the fact that her broodmare sire is the stout arch 
Yeah, very much so. You've got Arch there. It's the female family of grade two winner Surya. And, you know, the sire gets some longer winded fillies, mostly on dirt. A couple of Kentucky Oaks winners highlighting his resume. But they can go long, and that's what we're looking at here. Lifetime Citizen ran pretty well in the Bolton Landing Stakes, going five and a half furlongs. A nice ride that afternoon by Louis Saez, who found the inside turning into the stretch to save some valuable ground. She finished with some interest. She might be interesting at somewhat of a price. We're going to go back to the number five Romantic Babes career debut at Saratoga on August the 11th. You see her right now in the red cap. She's still far behind at the 316th pole, but she does not finish like a 38 to one shot. She rolls late. Yeah, rallying debut winner going five and a half furlongs. Sometimes you wonder whether some of these can sort, you know, will have that same punch in a two turn race where the pace set up is likely going to be different, but really liked this late kick that she unleashed to make up ground there. Family of Breeders' Cup Turf Mile, or Breeders' Cup Mile winner Singletary, excuse me. Romantic Babe, she ran quite well in that race. She was off slow, steadied a bit on the turn, and we saw that electric turn of foot late. She was helped by a fast pace up front. The six is Sassy Sienna. Sassy Sienna is by midshipman. She has already won around two turns, perhaps a very valuable handicapping angle. Only a 54 buyer speed figure, however, at Indiana Grand. Yeah, she's certainly going to be facing stronger competition here. We'll have to move forward from that standpoint. But I am encouraged that the Brad Cox barn has been having a very good summer, picking up Javier Castellano as she ships in. And, you know, Midshipman has really been a decent turf sire. He's got runners like Lady Shipman and Stakes winner Red Lodge on his resume. Uh, half to a couple of stakes placed horses and the second dam was a very good juvenile herself a lot of things to like here I think and another thing to like is the positive formulator fact for her young trainer Brad Cox over the past two years last out maiden winners on turf 35 percent winners a two dollar fifty three cent return on investment we complete the field with the number seven wild and ready this one is by Windstar stallion more than ready and this is a very strong pedigree yeah, very much so. Turf on both sides. More than ready, a top 20 juvenile sire nationally. A very good turf sire with runners on his resume like Pluck, Regally Ready. The dam of this one, a turf stakes winner, so you're getting solid ability on both sides. And she was belatedly making up some ground to be third in Romantic Babe's maiden win. Uh, I liked that effort quite a bit. I thought that was a really solid effort. And this is what trainer Mark Cassie does well. As we note from the formulator fact, over the past three years, with second time starting two-year-olds on turf, stretching out from sprint to route, he wins at almost a 30% rate with a $4.42 return on investment. That's that's the number seven, wild and ready, six to one on the morning line. Julian Leperu has the mount. Where are you going in this race? You can go so many different ways. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I don't think you can throw out Orbolution. I think very well placed, very well bred filly who obviously relished both stretching out and the turf in her last start after two decent thirds sprinting on dirt to start her career. I think she's getting good at the right time for this race. I'm also interested in Sassy Sienna. As we mentioned, we'll surely be facing stronger competition than she saw at Indiana, but I like that she's won at that seven and a half furlong distance for a strong barn and getting a big rider upgrade coming to Saratoga. And in your single race exotics, I'm going to be looking at Wild and Ready, who we just discussed, perhaps rallying into some pace for a piece of it. I like her with the experience under her belt now. I was very impressed with the professionalism shown by the number five romantic babe in that career debut. She's going to have to prove it as she stretches out three furlongs and only her second lifetime start. But I think she's going to offer some good value on the tote board. Nine to two on the morning line for trainer David Donk. I'm going to go five, one, three, four in the $100,000 PG Johnson stakes. We urge all our friends watching at home that if they're interested in betting the Thursday Saratoga card, please do so with DRF bets. A 10% win place takeout awaits you on 10 select tracks this summer including Saratoga, you'll also access a $300 cash bonus. You can find out more at drf.com forward slash take 10. Approximate post time for the PG Johnson Stakes, 540 Eastern on Thursday. Best of luck.